<laughs> if only you knew the future we have in store. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. X-Men 97 is well into season one with at least two more seasons on the way. Hopefully more. Hopefully they'll announce season four. And Marvel just used the series to bring back some very specific versions of Spider-Man and Venom. And it's part of the larger plans Marvel has for this version of the X-Men and other animated TV shows is going to be doing in the next couple of years. X-Men 97 is meant to be the start of something really big. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. But if you didn't spot their first big cameo scene, it wasn't meant to be subtle, but it was pretty quick. So if you only watched the episode once or you weren't looking real closely, you might have missed it. During the very beginning of X-Men 97 episode 1, they featured the Daily Bugle newspaper. The feature article was about the Hellfire Gala, which is the big party from the comics thrown on Genosha during the attack from the Wild Sentinel. That's like a whole separate thing, talking about the attack on Genosha. We could talk about that for an hour. But notice the article is co-written by Peter Parker and Eddie Brock. Also, Eddie Brock is misspelled as Eddie Block. I'm sure he'll blame Peter Parker for that. Just another reason for him to hate Spider-Man. Not that you'll be much help, but I can't do this alone. We're partners. For now. Partners? Am I out of my mind? Next we'd notice there's the article questioning if Spider-Man is a mutant like the X-Men. Both are meant to be direct references to Spider-Man the Animated Series from the 90s because that series crossed over with X-Men the Animated Series multiple times. Those versions of Spider-Man and Venom are canon to X-Men the Animated Series. Some of you probably started to figure out what Marvel's doing behind the scenes with all this too. But the mutant Spider-Man question is also a reference to a specific crossover episode called The Mutant Agenda, which was a season two episode of Spider-Man. He worries that his mutation from the spider bite is getting worse, so he goes to Beast in the X-Men for help in understanding mutations. Pretty much all of the X-Men Spider-Man crossovers at that time happened on the Spider-Man series, which is why they're animated to look more like the Spider-Man characters as opposed to their traditional animation style of X-Men animated series. Like they look a little bit different. It's close, but not exactly the same. One of the reasons for that is because they wanted to make this all canon to each other, but also the same studio was animating these shows. But a lot of these crossovers happened on the Spider-Man series instead of X-Men the Animated Series episodes because Marvel had only just started doing a lot of these animated series in the early 90s with X-Men the Animated Series. Then years later, they started doing more and more animated series, Spider-Man, and then had plans for even more series after that, like an animated Daredevil series with the version of Daredevil that showed up on Spider-Man as well. These are actually deleted scenes from that canceled Daredevil animated series. They're based on a lot of comic book covers, but it's meant to be the version that you saw during Spider-Man the Animated Series. And as you start to see what's going on here, in the 90s, Marvel was creating an early version of what the MCU would eventually become, where you had multiple series all crossing over with each other on different shows, and they were saying that all these heroes lived in the same universe on the same Earth. Now, the reason why they didn't do as many of these crossovers on X-Men episodes at the time, X-Men the Animated Series, was because it took the success of X-Men the Animated Series to give Marvel the confidence to try something like the MCU at that time. And remember, a lot of this is happening around the time that Marvel is about to go bankrupt. So there were a lot of big plans that Marvel had at that time that wound up getting canceled because of the bankruptcy. But you have to remember in the early 90s when they started with X-Men the Animated Series at that time, they weren't really ready to do this MCU or try for an MCU until later when Spider-Man the Animated Series started premiering. And that didn't happen until a couple years later. And probably the biggest reason for them not doing the Daredevil animated show is that it would have started after Spider-Man the Animated Series. Around that time is when the actual bankruptcy was going on at Marvel. Fox also didn't care to order more series. They didn't care about having their own MCU on Fox at the time either. By the late 90s, all that stuff winds up getting canceled, and that was the end of it until now, in present day, with X-Men 97, the revival of the animated series. So that's why this version of Spider-Man and Venom are the same ones from Spider-Man the 90s series. The producer said that there would be many cameos like this during X-Men 97 season 1. This is just meant to be the beginning of that. 
on one hand, it's them having a lot of fun, like because it's super cool to bring back characters that were already canon to X-Men the Animated Series, like, hey, look at the cameos, this is great. But the other really big reason for all these cameos, like the more sly reason, specifically Spider-Man and Venom here, is because Marvel has larger plans to do more revival series of the older stuff in Spider-Man the Animated Series, which is one of the first ones that was discussed. You probably heard people talking about this after the first couple episodes of X-Men 97, like, bring everything back now. In the case of Spider-Man, it would be like doing Spider-Man 98 in the way that X-Men the Animated Series came back as X-Men 97. I don't know specifically that they would call it Spider-Man 98, but the reason they named it X-Men 97 was because 1997 was the year X-Men the Animated Series Season 6 would have aired had it not been canceled back in the 90s. Same deal for Spider-Man the Animated Series. Season 6 of that show would have aired in 1998 had it not been canceled. Also why they ended on a weird cliffhanger with him meeting Stan Lee and learning that he was a fictional character. Probably one of the most Spider-Verse style twists of all time. Also one of the best Stan Lee cameo scenes of all time too. I don't believe what you're telling me. In your reality, I'm a character in fiction? Yep, and I'm an actor who plays you on TV. Looking for some guy named Stan Lee. What? Spider-Man? If you didn't realize too, Madam Web during that series, the better version of Madam Web, we don't need to talk about the live action movie anymore. That version of Madam Web was actually voiced by Stan Lee's wife in real life, which is why during that cameo scene, when he shows up with her on screen at the same time, he remarks on her like, why does she sound so great? Many years later, she also did a live action cameo scene with him, like one of his traditional live action cameo scenes. This is her standing next to him during X-Men Apocalypse. But you remember back in the 90s, Fox and Marvel canceled all those animated shows around the same time, mostly because Fox only purchased a set number of episodes. So when Marvel finished producing all of them at the time, Fox felt like they had enough for syndication, so they didn't need to order more seasons. They didn't want to pay for more episodes. They just wanted enough so they could show episodes anytime they wanted, thus five seasons of both shows. Like I said, Fox didn't really care about having their own interconnected MCU-style universe of animated shows at the time. Toy sales be damned. In fact, most network executives at the time didn't even care about animated shows just in general because live-action series always earned vastly more money than animated shows, primarily because of the way commercials were sold. Typically at the time in the 90s, animated shows were heavily regulated by Congress based on the way they were allowed to market toys to kids or show commercials during episodes. Previously, going back 30, 40 years, the entire history of kids' animated shows were very, very different. For most of the history of all television shows, they earn their money back based on commercials that are sold when those are aired. Then cable rose up, you started to get syndication, they started to earn extra money for selling their shows to other TV networks, so they got a little extra chunk of money too. But by the late 80s, by the 90s, Congress started regulating animated shows so they couldn't sell commercials on them, so they really couldn't earn money the same way on them, so they had to rely on toy sales to earn money for kids' shows. This sort of gets into the history of Saturday morning cartoons, and X-Men the Animated Series by the end of its run was a Saturday morning cartoon. And for most of the history of Saturday morning cartoons, most network executives and a lot of parents just viewed them as glorified ads for toys as opposed to compelling dramatic stories. The Simpsons did a lot of great parodies of this, like the Mars Chocobot Hour. That's the way a lot of Saturday morning cartoons were viewed. Eventually, Congress regulated TV networks so much that it prevented them from making more money on toy sales, thus making a lot of animated shows unprofitable. And Saturday morning cartoons were really killed off eventually by the rise of cable TV when you had channels out there that would just air kids programming all the time. Forget the internet. Like, the internet came along a little while after that, too, and really killed Saturday morning cartoons. But cut to present day, Marvel, a lot of the other streamers, models for how they make money on shows just in general is evolving, so now it makes more sense financially for them to do these animated shows like X-Men 97. They can actually make it worthwhile on a financial level because, let's be honest, they really only care about making money. They would not have attempted X-Men 97 if they didn't think that they would earn money on it through subscriptions to Disney+, Plus, ads that they sell on it. I think some of the lower subscription tiers have commercials in the shows, like traditional TV shows would air commercials. And there's all the new money that they earn on the toy sales, which you can actually go buy. Like, there are a lot of toys based on X-Men animated series out there now. I even bought this Magneto helmet. Now that they've figured that out, like how to make money on animated shows, bringing Spider-Man the 90s series back is just the next step. Like, oh, we can do this, so it makes more sense to bring this stuff back. 
And if you didn't hear the news a couple weeks ago when X-Men 97 started, they were doing all these interviews about their future plans for a lot of animated series. Marvel specifically said it's intending to develop what they're calling the 90s universe that you see in X-Men the Animated Series or X-Men 97. So over the next several years, do not be surprised if you see a more self-contained mini MCU-like connected universe with these characters set during this time period in this universe. If it wasn't clear, X-Men the Animated Series is still set in the late 90s, 1997, specifically thus the title X-Men 97. The main producer on the show said that this allows them to use any character in any way that they want, not having to worry about messing with traditional live-action MCU continuity or stepping on the toes of upcoming movies. Case in point, previously, one of the problems that they had on the What If series is that they couldn't do X-Men until X-Men 97 premiered, and they couldn't do a lot of other characters until they debuted in live action in the MCU movies. But on X-Men 97, they don't have that problem. They can use whatever characters they want. Because the show takes place in the 90s, they're not even trying to be connected to the MCU at the moment. Now, there is a lot of stuff that they're doing on this and a lot of stuff that's canon and stuff that they did in the past that's similar to what they're doing in the live action movies now, like Secret Wars. I'll talk about that in a second, too. So it will seem like X-Men, the animated series, X-Men 97 stuff is setting up stuff that's happening in the movies. But I don't think that's entirely the case. But one of the other big problems that Marvel's had in the past, they've talked about this when producers on different Marvel movies will get into arguments about who gets to use which character or which comic book story twist in their movie. And generally, just way harder to pull off a lot of these crossovers in live action just because of actors' contracts. That is not an issue with X-Men 97, any of the other series they would do set in that universe, like Spider-Man the 90s series. They could do all the crossovers they want. In fact, some of you might remember Marvel already did something similar more recently, calling it the Marvel Animated Universe with Ultimate Spider-Man, Avengers Assemble, and Hulk and the Agents of Smash all existing in the same universe crossing over. The only real main difference with those shows where they weren't produced by Kevin Feige or the Marvel Studios people proper, they were done by Marvel TV when that group existed separately from Marvel Studios. It was a totally different group of people. They're the ones that did Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the Netflix Marvel Defender shows like Daredevil, Punisher, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Jessica Jones. Well, obviously, we're talking about interconnected universes. Like, that's a really great example of a live action version done by a different group that wasn't Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios. Makes sense that they're bringing Daredevil, all those characters back and doing the same thing inside the MCU. And now they're doing the same thing with X-Men the Animated Series, like bringing it all back and doing an interconnected universe, but just set in a slightly different universe than the MCU. If you don't remember, though, several years ago, Disney reorganized everything Marvel underneath Kevin Feige, giving him sole creative control of everything Marvel, including the movies, all the TV shows, animated and live action and the comics, too. There's been a lot of talk the last couple years since Marvel Phase 4, Marvel Phase 5 started that Marvel run into a big mess with them just trying to produce way too much content way too fast. Leads to a lot of quality control problems. The Disney executives are largely to blame for that, like ordering Kevin Feige to produce way more stuff than he could actually creatively manage at the time. That's probably the biggest reason why you see Marvel pull back on their output, like just slow enough so that Kevin Feige does have time to do quality control on every single thing that comes out. And it's one of the reasons why X-Men 97 has been so solid. Like they just have a really good creative team already. And Kevin Feige has the time to actually pay attention to it when it's coming out and make sure that it's as good as he wants it to be. I know there was a little bit of drama with the showrunner, Bo DeMeo, being fired from X-Men 97 just as season one was premiering. But he actually wrote most of season three before he was fired. So like most of his work was actually done on the series when he was fired. That's one of the reasons why he got fired. But talk about X-Men 97 having their own little MCU corner going on while this other stuff in live action is going on. Probably the best example of this, and it's very apropos, is when Spider-Man the 90s series did their version of Secret Wars. We're getting ready to have Avengers Secret Wars in the next couple of years in the MCU with all the characters from all the major teams like X-Men, Fantastic Four, Avengers characters all crossing over together. They already did this back in the 90s many, many years ago, and it was amazing. Now, that version of Secret Wars was based more on the 1980s version because we're talking about the 90s when this was happening and they hadn't done the more modern version yet. We just got the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer a while ago. We actually just got another one at CinemaCon, but they teased a live action version of Secret Wars with the comic book from the more modern version with Doctor Doom on the cover. Deadpool and Wolverine is meant to specifically set up Secret Wars, even though that movie's not going to happen for a while. 
But in the way all the Marvel movies tend to change comic book plots, they'll do the same thing for their version of Secret Wars. Like it will look a little bit different from the more modern version and the original version, but you see some Easter eggs for both of those different versions. But if you think about it, them doing their own little MCU corner with X-Men 97 set in that universe with all the other Avengers, Spider-Man series all crossing over doing their own thing set during the 90s is probably one of the best ideas they've had in a while. They can have their cake and eat it too. So any of the issues that are going on with live action MCU movies or dissatisfaction people have with those movies, all this X-Men 97 stuff, all this animated crossover stuff can be completely separate. Case in point, we're getting an Avengers crossover in upcoming episodes of X-Men 97. I just did a trailer video because Captain America is going to cross over with the X-Men pretty soon. He's canon to X-Men the Animated Series because he knows Wolverine. They fought together during World War II in that universe. Fun fact too, in the early days of the MCU, Kevin Feige also tried to get a Hugh Jackman Wolverine cameo scene in Captain America the First Avenger. He was going to show up during World War II when he was saving the Howling Commandos. There's a whole other story behind that too. Like the reason why that didn't wind up happening is because it was when they were getting ready to do X-Men Origins Wolverine and Hugh Jackman's Wolverine was hitting the peak of his popularity and Fox was like, hell no, you can't borrow our Wolverine. Cut to present day, you have Deadpool and Wolverine with Deadpool saluting Chris Evans' Captain America, watching footage of him inside the TVA. So maybe we'll see a Chris Evans cameo scene at some point, but this scene is from Winter Soldier. So as of right now, that's the closest we've seen to actual Wolverine in Captain America live action crossover. But if Marvel is going to be bringing back more of these classic series doing more stuff inside the 90s animated universe, like their own little MCU over here, which other series besides Spider-Man the 90s series do you want to see during that time period? If you go back and you watch those classic Secret Wars episodes of Spider-Man, you can actually see here one of the characters that has not shown up we haven't heard about yet on X-Men 97 is Iron Man. Big reminder, X-Men 97 episode 6 is happening this week. My video will post after they release it on Wednesday. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Everybody click here to learn about Captain America crossing over with X-Men 97 and click here for my brand new Fallout episode video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.